Okay, I'm ready. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on KTech. And uh, I want to, first of all, thank everybody for tuning in to the, now that we're finally broadcasting live on the actual local airwaves of KTech, uh, we got a special interview here tonight. And it is none other, or well, with none other than a a uh, film producer, or better better yet, I could say a great filmmaker of some great independent uh, horror films. Uh, I would like to introduce you guys to Mr. David Sterling. How's it going, David? Hey, good. How's it going with you? Oh, I'm doing all right. You know, just uh, a nice, uh, nice, cool evening here in Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, yeah, what's the temp? Uh, we're like in the forties right now. So it's pretty, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, temp out here it's about uh, I don't know maybe sixty. Yeah, you guys always get a lot of warm, a lot more warm weather than we do here, here in here in South Dakota anyway. California's always but, nice. <laughs> so so, uh, so what's up? Not a whole lot. Uh, I figured we'd do, a, do an interview with you today. Uh, you uh, found interest uh, when you uh, uh, seen uh, whatever it was that I posted on uh, Brendan Mitchell's uh, web s- or Facebook page, and then uh, you wanted to do an interview, or you want me to interview you, so here we are. Yes. Yes, I saw that on uh, Sean T. Phillips' page. Yeah, because I, I tagged them both on that uh, when I did that interview with Charlie Talbert, and uh, mm-hmm. that's... Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's the guy who played uh, Angus in the main in the movie Angus. So it's kind of a, mm. but uh, but yes, David, you you uh, are known for just uh, coming up with some uh, uh, being a good uh, film producer, more or less. And uh, how how long have you been uh, in the business? Um, I've been making movies for uh, since the nineties, and uh, producer for hire. So that means uh, people come to me with their ideas and sometimes I have ideas for them and they give me um, funds to uh, make movies usually I work for the distributor so uh, so they have distribution built in to the movie before we make them we've been doing that for a while and uh, we're over 100 movies now that we produced and we're working on some new stuff now I uh, just finished Grand Auto Theft and uh, I might be doing uh, Alien vs. Titanic. And there's another gaming movie that we're trying to make is Assassin's of War. Kind of, kind of like a knock them off, kind of like Asylum does with the, you know, when they see a, you know, when they see like Terminators coming out, so they'll do Terminator. So we're trying to do uh, some, some original game-type movies that, that people can relate to because we're kind of knocking off the uh, the big-budget games. Yeah, it seems like you, you kind of do a lot of parodies of uh, popular uh, popular titles as well as uh, some of the original stuff that you've uh, you've done. That's all on your Internet Movie Database page that I, t- that I took a look at. Well, we did, um, we did, um, you know, Pirates of Caribbean were really hot. We did a couple pirate movies. We did... Pirate Bats and, and, uh, what's the other pirate movie? Camp Pirate, Pirate Island or something like that. Ghost of Pirate Island, which was a Lionsgate release. And, um, when Iron Man came out, we did Metal Man. We did, uh, Captain America. We did Captain Battle. And, um, just trying to think of the other stuff. Uh, we did, um, there's a movie called Underworld. It's serious. So we did something called Dark World. You know, these are original movies, but, uh, you know, they have, they have some kind of hook. Sure. Yeah, I mean... You know, I, I, to I, get people interested, you know. Um, I'm just trying to think of... Uh, we did Instead of a Hulk, we did The Amazing Bulk. And, you know, just, just 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 a lot of stuff. But we do a lot of original stuff. Yeah, that's, also. What, that's what it seems like anyway. Uh, and, uh... It's uh, amazing your your body of work and uh, you know one question I did have because uh, I remember you uh, mentioned it to me like uh, uh, it's kind of like a almost low budget to almost no budget but uh, what, if you're not able to uh, you know 
make a lot of money off the movies that you uh, make or or produce. How are you able to get like such stars as like Ron Jeremy to to do your to do a movie? You know, every, every movie's different and every budget's different. So I worked with a lot of main stars over the years. Um, um, some bigger names and, and some some smaller names. Uh, like for example, I worked with Priscilla Barnes from Please Company. She was in Devil's Reject, James Bond movies. I worked with Lorenzo Lamas from Falcon Crest, Falcon Crest, and um, Renegade, and uh, still a lot of other TV and movies. And uh, Reggie Bannister from Phantasm, all four Phantasm films. Um, we met Ron Jeremy, great guy about. 10, 11 years ago, we've done lot, about five movies. Each movie's different. And, um, you know, uh, let's see, who else? We work with, um, Richard Hack from Battlestar Galactica, the original series and the new sci-fi channel, one that was in the 2000s. And we did, um, in fact, where, uh, the two movies that I work with him on, on Thunder and, Unseen Evil, which Unseen Evil actually played on Showtime a while back. Um, they're getting re-released to DVD this spring, and uh, they'll be coming to some VOD. So, uh, you know, so I work with a bunch of other, other, you know, like I work with all the school queens, Daniel Quigley, Michelle Bauer, but, um, but, uh, <laughs> um, can't think of her last name, Britt. Well, um, also Tiffany Shepard and um, Britt Stevens. Frank Stevens. Do a little editing, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of... So I, I work with a lot of screen... I'll do that again. I work with a lot of screen crews for Mary Quigley, Frank Stevens, and uh, Michelle Bauer. Oh. And they were, they were popular in the 80s and they're making up making a comeback now in some movies, in 13, 13 cult movies down in, and they're also making a, making a comeback. I mean, they, they've always been working, but, you know, they're getting popular again. And they work with some of the newer screen queens. Maybe, um, I'll say that again. I work with some of the newer screen queens. Kissing Shepard, I get a movie called Death Factory. And they work with, um, Felicia Rhodes, who we had to call Christmas. And, um, uh, so, uh, just trying to think of these different uh, screen crews I work with. The new and up and coming uh, screen crew that I work with on a couple of things is uh, Mindy Robinson. You see her a lot in, um, TV, reality TV. You see her on Full Moon stuff. Oh. And Full Moon streaming stuff, you see her. Um, I work with, um, Work with a bunch of a uh, bunch of different people over the years. I mean, if you make movies and you make a lot of movies, you'll you'll end up working with people. I did a um, it's funny when I did a uh, uh, I did a movie called Scream Queen with Renee Quigley, and that was '98. I made two movies in one week, and I was making another movie called Bloodbath, and we had um Joe Palato from uh, Day Day the Dead and Dawn of the Dead. So, so I'm making two movies in a week. Jeez. Uh, working with these, um, these, these stars. So it just, just, just depends. Um, uh, you know, I work with, uh, Tim Thomason on Unseen Evil. He's from the Transfer series, but he's been on David Letterman show. He's been on a lot of TV, a lot of sci-fi and horror movies. You know, Down Man, he's in Down Man, I believe, and just, just, all kinds of people you work with. You know, one with the great, you know, actors and actresses that, that are up and coming that people don't know. They're, you know, I live in Los Angeles. There's many great, you know, young young talent out here. So we're able to make these movies at, at, at a budget and get real good acting, you know. You can make a movie anywhere, but I think, you know, L.A. is like the mecca for you know, movie making. So... Uh, Whatever budget, whatever you need, you could easily find somebody, find a lot of people to help you do stuff, either DP, direct, acting, you know, editing, you know, music. 
Sure. Well, well, well you know, it's it's almost a rite of passage. If, if you're making movies, you should come to L.A. at least for a year or two and see what it's like. Because oh. that's, you know, you could say, well, I can make a movie in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, you can. And they got people there, too, but it's not like here. You know, and I'm sure I, you know, and I know people work in Georgia to make good movies and stuff like that. But a young, young filmmaker or a young actor or whatever, they want to come out here and, uh, uh, you know, just, just see what it's like to come out to Hollywood and, 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 and be around the business. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's kind of an exciting thing. I mean, I've always, I've always been interested in living in Los Angeles. I, I don't know about living there, but just to, to check it out and stuff. And, and uh, you know, I mean, you know, the closest I've ever been there was when I went to Astoria, Oregon, which was, for those of you who don't know, the the movie The Goonies was filmed, majority of the movie The Goonies was filmed there. And that was kind of like a little movie town, you know, in a way, because of all the all the films that was uh, shot there. But, uh, yeah, Los Angeles would be kind of a nice area. I just don't know if I could afford to live there. So... I don't know how you do it, but uh, there must be a way. Well, you know, um, you know, you come out here, and um, a lot of actors or, or filmmakers they come out here and they uh, get a roommate, they get like a you know a nine to five job if they have to, and just uh, just uh, making movies, being a star, being on TV. Uh, sometimes you get lucky. Most of the time, it's a lot of hard work. you got to be just really, like, focused on it. And, you know, part of it is coming out here and just be able to live day to day, get that together so you could focus on, you know, just meeting, meeting a lot of people. I mean, when I moved out here, I knew nobody. I knew zero. Now, I know a lot of people. But it was just like, a, you know, every day you would have to, like, look okay, at I have to. I have to do this work. I have to meet these people. I have to make phone calls. I have to go to conventions. I have to get my name out there. It's just, it's just, you know, a day to day grind. Just, you know, just to just to get, just to get your name out there. Now, if just a little plug for me, since I've been doing this for a while, if, if you do want to make movies and, and you kind of want to, uh, you know, maybe fast track just a little. You know, I'm a producer for hire, and I provide services. So they go to my website, SterlingMovieFactory.com. They can see what I do, and uh, that might be a way to uh, kind of start making movies, kind of a quick start. You know, I mean, there's making in the business. There's all different ways of doing it. Yeah, and, and there's no like a conventional way. It's people. People get lucky. They, they, you know, they, they walk in their first interview, their first audition, and they're exactly what that director, Jack Nagy, is looking for. Or you go on a hundred, you know, auditions, and you just, just nothing. It's, it's luck of a draw. So it's going to be really focused, yourself, really tenacious about you know, doing it, and, and just because you want to do it, then you're going to be able to, and that's, that's part of why you want to come out here for a year or two, and just kind of, like, get a feel for it, and, and see what happens. Yeah, actually, uh, I kind of actually had a, a, believe it or not, a little small part in uh, one of uh, Brennan Mitchell's movies, I don't know if you saw all the stuff that he's done, but... Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, Brendan Mitchell is an uh, online friend of mine, but David Sterling knows who he is, and he's a movie hoarder, and he loves films. Well, when uh, when uh, Wet Movie was doing his uh, uh, Out and About Vegas, the movie, I actually did the, uh, I was one of the guys who were, was in the opening of the scene. I was the guy in the Jeep uh, calling, uh, calling Brendan to wish him good luck on his trip. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm friends with Brendan. And Sean, actually, if you go to their, their, uh, well, I would, they do hangout, they do a hangout on Google Live every Monday. And if you go to Brandon's, um, YouTube page, you could find me on their live show, probably about three weeks ago. Sure. Kind of cool. Me, Brandon, and Sean talking about, you know, whatever, it was kind of fun. It was about an hour long. 
and then I'll be on both their YouTube channels on different different shows. Um, Sean used to live in um, Maryland, and I had to, um, I was visiting a friend in Maryland one weekend, and I didn't know that they lived fairly close to each other, so we ended up uh, uh, doing a, um, a yeah, um, interview with Sean for his channel. Oh, this must be, geez, that was the end of the day, this 2009. I met him at Comic-Con. I was a fan of his before I met him. I met him at the uh, Lloyd Crockman Roast for Trauma at the Comic-Con 2009. And, uh, no, well, been friends, and Sean's been a bunch of my movies, so is Brendan. And, um, go a lot of, you know, local conventions with those guys I see in there, and they're quite popular. People know who they are. People like seeing their, their, uh, YouTube, you know, the cool dude, the yeah. video update, and, uh, <laughs> Brendan Horton, <laughs> and they do DVDs, and, you know, around town, and all, all that other kind of stuff that they do. And then, um, when I'm showing down set, you know, we try to do a podcast so uh, we could let people know what I'm up to and what he's up to. And we're going to see conventions coming up that we'll be attending. I, I don't know which one's going to which, but uh, I'm going to go to Monster Palooza coming up here pretty quickly and uh, one year time, which will be in Anaheim over the next couple months. Probably uh, Comic uh, Con kind of in San Diego. I'm going to go to Horror Hound this weekend in Cincinnati, but I'm skipping it. But, I'll, but I probably will be coming to the Midwest a couple of times before the end of the year to a couple of conventions. I go to a lot of conventions. I've been to uh, Horror Hound many times, been to uh, St. Louis, Chicago. Uh, let's see, been to uh, still in Cleveland. Um, the famous one in Cleveland. I can't think of it right now. Um, sorry. And I live in Dallas where uh, Texas right now, and, uh, and I go to Louisville where uh, my, um, I can't remember all this stuff. <laughs> Qu- um, that's okay. That's, uh, let, let, let me see. I can't edit this out. I can't remember this one. Uh, let's see here. Oh, oh it's just, just, just skip that. But I go, to, I go to conventions in Louisville, and uh, just all over the place. And uh, hoping to go to more. Uh, you know, it's like in New, in, in California, there's many that I go to all year round. So there's a lot. So, uh, but you know, I've been at conventions in Arizona, Las Vegas, in Texas, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. So all over the place. I know and uh, um, it's a good way to market yourself. It's what I, and I'm a film fan, so it's kind of fun to go. You know, a lot of celebrities and a lot of fun things for real parties they have. And, you know, they have music at night, and it's just, just kind of a fun fun thing to do for uh, skinny, uh horror and sci fi is really young. Uh, uh, well, the fan base can have these conventions, you know, like Star Trek. They have their conventions and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah you got to have a convention for the nerds, you know. <laughs> for all the nerds. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, and I actually go to a lot of video gaming conventions. I've been going to E3, which is in Los Angeles. I've been going there many years. I also go to professional connections and uh, CES, which is a consumer electronic show in Vegas in January usually, and um, American Film Market, which is a professional filmmaking buyer and seller type convention, so, so all kinds of stuff, book fans, you know, whatever. Sure. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a lot, <laughs> lot out there, you know. Like in South Dakota here, I guess, the Rap City, something I didn't know until I, until I started working here. Uh, every June, around after Memorial Day weekend, they have a, a anime uh, convention. And I don't get into anime or anime. I feel like you know that's not really uh, you know the type of cartoons I enjoy watching. But they still have uh, that type of convention, so I think it's kind of neat. I'm probably going to try to attend it uh, 
because I've never been to a convention. I'm originally from northern Minnesota. Uh, in Minnesota, they, the type of conventions that they would have would be like tractor conventions, farming conventions, you know, stuff like mm-hmm. that, you know, but never any movie conventions. Of course mm-hmm. not. <laughs> you never know if those farmers want to invest in making movies, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I would, you know, uh, I would suggest any of these conventions, if you're not in uh, L.A. or whatever, like, uh, if I was a filmmaker, I'd go to the anime show. That would be kind of fun. Yeah, I, 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 I think I will definitely attend just because I want to see what it's like. I have never done, done that before, and I've always wanted to. So I figure if they got it, I might as well go. There's a, there's a, I haven't been, but in Los Angeles, there's a big anime one, which... Like 125,000 people go. I mean, because it's like, even though maybe you're not into that, it's just a lot of people doing a lot of fun things, you know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of a party atmosphere. Sure, sure. And, you know, and, it's, and probably if you go, there's probably some, probably you'd be surprised of like what, what, oh yeah, you know, I, I am kind of into this cartoon or this TV show or whatever, so. Yeah, I mean, if it's something I've heard of, or, I mean, you know, with me, sometimes I just have to go out and see it, if, uh, and, and who knows, maybe it's something I might get into after a while. I, I and, the, mm-hmm. and they got, like, people that are, like, from television and stuff that show up, too, so they've been doing it for about, I think, three or four years now, so I definitely, like I say, I, I'm, I'm going to attend regardless. I just, uh, I'm just not big on anime. I'm more like your modern-day cartoon guy, you know, Bugs Bunny, you know, uh, you know Hanna-Barbera stuff. Also, like Family Guy, you know, Simpsons, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. I was actually I was at Universal yesterday for the uh, Universal Park. And there were a few like Simpsons. They had like a cool Simpson, um, and, uh, kind of Simpson Town. They have a what the Quickie Mart, oh. and uh, you know what are cool. Uh, uh, they had like a Krusty the Clown Fun House and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of fun. You know, seeing that kind of stuff. I mean, Simpsons getting off topic a little, but that show is, that show's been on for like 25 years. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's since, uh, December of 1989, since their Christmas episode. Yeah. And, and now, do you count, do you count when there was on, um, oh, there used to be on that girl show, that oh, woman uh, show, that comedian. Tracy Allman? Tracy Allman. Yeah, that's well, right. I count, yeah, I count that, but I mean, it just as far as it actually being a show, show, you know, it's been on since uh, December of 1989. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I used to like what, but after like, you know, just think how many episodes of that. I mean, it's just. <laughs> it's, I mean, you know, when we think about, I mean, we're getting a topic, but like South Park, it's hard to believe South Park's almost twenty. Yeah. Well, I. I mean, I mean, I mean yeah. It's more. I don't watch. I don't watch Simpsons, and I watch more of South Park. South Park, you just it's more current, you know, because they, I think they put it together every week, you know. So whatever's going on in the world, they can keep it real current. Well, I think I think Family Guy is going to probably be in the tradition of the Simpsons because they're already on their twelfth season or thirteenth season, or I think it's twelfth season, probably twelfth anyway. But they're, yeah, I mean, like, like, that's why, like, like I'm saying, like, like. Maybe you're not an anime guy, but don't you think all that stuff's going to be at the animation convention? There's going to be all kinds of family guy stuff and the well, Simpsons. And, uh, I love, I actually, I, I love this show. It only ran for two years on um, G4, which is off the air now. I love Code Monkeys. Oh, okay. I don't know if you ever seen that show, no. but, uh, any, anyone who, uh, uh, likes those types of shows, like Beavis and Butthead, um, you know, like South Park, because it's really, you know, they're obnoxious, it's funny, it's a raw humor. Um, uh, uh, check out Code Monkey. You can probably see it on um, Netflix, or if you just Google it, I'm sure you could see channels on uh, uh, episodes sure. of it. You know, and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, it's funny, like, it's, it's, it's funny how adult animation really caught on over the past, let's say, more like 10 years, the adult swim and stuff. I'm surprised how much I like, um, uh, what's the one that my judge did after, uh, defense and butter, um... Oh, King of the Hill? 
King of the Hill. I don't know. I'm like at first, I didn't really like that show, but you know, it's it's, <laughs> it's hard kind not of a to, good show. Yeah, it's hard not to like it. It's actually a funny show. Yeah, you know. But, yeah, it's uh, just you know, it's it's just funny, and you know, I love watching. <laughs> I know we're getting off subject, but no, Beavis okay. and Butthead from the nineties are still. It's just hysterical, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I tell you what, David, I I appreciate uh, you spent a little time with me on this interview. Uh, about time to close it up here because I I don't want to go too long. But uh, I appreciate you, uh, you know, at least to let me interview you. That's pretty pretty nice of you. And have cool. a minute. well, I'm, I'm coming any time and uh, um, check out my stuff on Netflix or uh, look on me up on IMDb or www com or uh, David Sterling on Facebook and. You know, friend me, and we're always, I'm always updating every day what we're working on, the new movies that we're doing, and, uh, we do somewhere between three and eleven movies a year, so we're always working on something, so, uh, so I'm always posting, posting cool stuff, so. Thanks a lot for having me on your show. Hey, no problem, I appreciate, uh, appreciate you having the interest. Bye bye. And that was David (laughs) Sterling. Uh, a filmmaker, and uh, in a more or less independent filmmaker. If you if you've never heard of the guy before, well then I hope you at least enjoyed this interview. He he's very independent. You know, a lot of his stuff is on Netflix. There's a movie called Don't Look Into the Closet that's on Netflix. I am going to probably start watching some of the, or Don't Look in the Cellar. It's called, and I'm going to start watching some of this stuff because you know it's independent horror, and I've always been you know I, I've never been huge on horror, but I've been I've enjoyed it. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's interview, and uh, we'll be right back with some more Frankie Slauson show with, with myself and my good buddy Old Reb. We'll be rocking and rolling right here on the Frankie Slauson show on K Tech. <laughs> 